Hello, for today's video lecture, we're going to be talking about vectors. So a vector is any quantity that has both a magnitude and a direction. Uh, so this is usually represented visually by an arrow, uh, where the kind of length of the arrow represents the magnitude and the direction of the arrow represents the direction. Um, and when working with vectors, it's important to take into consider both of those quantities. So both magnitude and direction are going to be important in the vector equations that we're often going to be using. So we cannot treat these the same as what's known as scalar quantities, and a scalar quantity is something that has a magnitude but no direction. So something like mass would be an example of a scalar quality, uh, whereas this force over here is an example of a vector quantity. Uh, some other examples of vector quantities, so we've got obviously forces. Uh, we're also going to have velocities, accelerations, displacements, uh, anything that's going to have a direction associated with it is going to be a vector quantity. All right, so for vector representation, uh, we're generally going to have one of two forms. Uh, so often we're going to start in our problems with a magnitude and direction. So we might see a force on a box. Uh, it's got a total magnitude of 70 pounds and a uh, direction 15 degrees above horizontal. Uh, so that is a visual with a magnitude and direction. Uh, we are also going to have uh, the component form, which is going to be a magnitude in each coordinate direction. So I could say the overall force, it's got a net effect of negative uh, 67.6 pounds in the x direction and positive 18.1 pounds in the y direction. Uh, so this magnitude and direction or component form are the two different representations that we can work with. All right, and so one of the big things we're going to need to do with these vectors is be able to convert between forms. Uh, so we are going to have a magnitude and direction and want the components, or we're going to have the components and want the overall magnitude and direction. Uh, so when con converting between forms, uh, we're going to use right triangles and basic trigonometry uh, for this. Uh, so say we've got our coordinate axes, we've got some force of 600 newtons, 35 degrees above the x direction. How I would relate this to component forms is I'd make that into the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Uh, so the x leg over here, so this bottom piece is along the x-axis and this is along uh, the y direction. So for a right triangle like this, the opposite leg, the length of that opposite leg would be the magnitude times the sine of theta and our theta is 35 degrees over here and the adjacent leg is 600 or the magnitude times the cosine of theta. So if my overall magnitude is 600, 600 sine 35 is my y uh, component in this case and 600 cosine 35 is the x component in this case. So we're always going to draw in the overall magnitude as the uh, hypotenuse of our triangle and then the components are the two legs of our right triangle. All right, so say we want to go the other way. So we've got a X component of 300 newtons, a Y component of 200 newtons, and I want to know the overall magnitude and direction. All right, so those are the legs of my triangle. Uh, I'm going to draw in my hypotenuse at this point. And so for the overall length of that, that hypotenuse, I would use the Pythagorean theorem. So FX squared plus FY squared, so 300 squared plus 200 squared, Take the square root of that, it's going to give me the length or magnitude of my uh, vector. And for the angle, uh, for this angle theta that I would have right here, I'm going to use the inverse tangent. So the tangent is the ratio of opposite over adjacent. So the inverse tangent, if I know that ratio, it's 200 over 300, opposite over adjacent. I take the inverse tangent and that would give me this angle right here. So in this case, it's inverse tangent of 200 over 300 is my angle theta. All right, and you do want to be careful with this. So depending on how you measure your angle and how you are going to um, set up your problem, uh, we have to, we can't blindly use the equations we had before. We have to always set up the triangle and think about opposite, think about adjacent. So over here, uh, this Fy is the opposite, but if I define theta this way, 
fx is my opposite. So this is f sine theta. This is also f sine theta. Um, but one is fy, one is fx. So generally, if I'm measuring from horizontal, sine is y, cosine is x. Uh, if I am measuring from vertical, the uh, sine is x and the cosine is y uh, for these relationships. Uh, so same thing goes for the kind of moving backwards. Uh, Pythagorean theorem doesn't change, but the arctangent function, uh, the kind of top and bottom could switch around in those equations. So always set up your triangles. Uh, again, the overall magnitude is always the hypotenuse, and then the x and y uh, components are going to be the legs of your triangle. So in three dimensions, uh, we either need two angles and a magnitude, or uh, we'd need three components. So um, magnitude and direction now, we need two angles. So in 3D space, you need at least two angles to define where you are. Uh, and then in three dimensions, obviously, we have three components. We'd have an x, y, and a z component in all of this. All right, so if we need to convert between forms in this case, it's a little more complicated. So it's still going to be based on trigonometry, but it's going to be um, multiple triangles in this case. So to convert between forms, uh, we're going to use two right triangles where the leg of one triangle is going to be the hypotenuse of the other right triangle. So uh, again, you're going to use trig relationships to convert back and forth. So you're going to use uh, hypotenuse times sine or cosine of an angle to find the components of a right triangle. Um, and here is how we would go between these two uh, equivalent vectors that we have here. Uh, so triangle number one is kind of this upright triangle. Um, so it's standing up, uh, and the hypotenuse is my 30 newtons. So that's the hypotenuse of the one triangle. Same thing over here. Uh, and we can kind of see that the one leg is in the y direction. So this leg here would be Fy. So 30 times the sine of that angle would give the opposite side. Uh, and the other uh, leg of the triangle, it's not in the x or the z, but it is in the xz plane. Uh, so it's going to be kind of left over. And what that's going to be, that's going to be the hypotenuse of our second triangle here. So the hypotenuse of the second triangle, one leg is in the x, one leg is in the z direction, and then the hypotenuse is what's left over from my previous triangle here. So it's kind of two layers uh, of all of this. And so how all of this works mathematically, uh, triangle number one, uh, I'm going to call that angle phi. Uh, so F uh, is going to get split into Fy and Fxz. And so Fy would be F sine phi, Fxz. Uh, this length down here would be F cosine theta, uh, phi. And then Fxz gets split into, uh, it's the hypotenuse of triangle two, so that gets split into two more parts. Uh, so Fxz times cosine theta, uh, and again, this is the angle theta for the second triangle, um, would be my fx. fxz sine theta is going to be my fz over here. And so if I put in this identity through this whole thing, we kind of go through multiple layers of our triangles to find fy, fx, and fz in all of this. So that is method one. If we know if we have a magnitude in two directions and we need to split it into components, this is the process we're generally going to go through. Uh, there is kind of a shortcut method if we have a different kind of setup. So sometimes we're going to have a force or velocity along some predetermined direction uh, as determined by a body's geometry. Uh, so the simplest example of this is a cable. Uh, so say we've got a pole that is like three meters out, two meters out this way, six meters tall, and we've got a cable attaching the top uh, to the origin point. Um, so how far the cable goes in the x direction, it would be three meters. How far it goes in the z direction, it's two meters. And it goes up in the z direction, six meters. Uh, so the angles aren't given to me, but the kind of dimensions in each uh, direction are given to me. And this is a special case where I can kind of skip sines and cosines, actually. Uh, so to find the components of this vector, uh, rather than determining the angles, I'm going to instead use what's uh, I'm going to instead use ratios. Uh, so particularly, so we've got a similar setup like we have here. Um, 
if I've got some tension in a set direction, so going along that cable, where again I'm going to know LX, LY, and LZ, um, the ratio of each component of the tension force is going to be the same as the ratio of the lengths. Uh, so what I mean by this is the if I know the overall tension, the tension, the X component of the tension over the overall tension is going to be the same as the X component of the length, so how far do I move in the length here, divided by the overall length of the physical cable or other uh, piece. So same thing goes for Y uh, and same thing goes for Z. So find the overall length of a cable in 3D space like this, uh, you just need to use the 3D version of Pythagorean theorem. So LX squared plus LY squared plus LZ squared, take the square root of that, that would give you the overall length. And we can use this ratio method uh, with kind of a known cable geometry or known uh, beam geometry to break a tension force that's known into X, Y, and Z components. All right, so that's all we have for today on vectors. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.